Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Save yourself, man! While well, the senior Conservative MP Sir Charles Walker has strongly criticised Matt Hancock's plan to impose 10-year prison service uh, sentences on people who try to evade quarantine rules, calling it utterly ridiculous, and he's accused the government of robbing people of hope. I spoke to him earlier and began by asking why he's so furious. We were told that vaccines were the way out of this. We were told when Christmas was cancelled, celebrate your Christmas at Easter. Bring your family together then because the vaccines will allow that. And a lot of people have been holding on through the long winter months, looking forward to that date in Easter. And what the Secretary of State for Transport has done by telling people not even to plan their domestic summer days is to suggest unwittingly, or wittingly, I don't know, that perhaps lockdown is going to extend from the spring into the summer and beyond. And that is a terribly irresponsible thing to do, a terribly, terribly irresponsible thing to do with a very stressed out and exhausted nation. I mean, could, could it be that actually the irresponsible thing to do was to tell people that things were going to be OK? You no, know, and that, and that actually Grant Shapps might be being responsible by telling people, no, readjust not. your settings, you know. No, we can't go on like this. We've got a vaccine. We've got a vaccine with high efficacy. There will always be new variants of coronavirus. That's what coronaviruses do. They evolve, and this will happen year after year after year. The current situation is absolutely not sustainable. It's not sustainable for people's mental health and emotional well-being. It's not sustainable for business. It is not sustainable in any way at all. The government needs to have its feet held to the fire on this. Now, I hope that Grant Shapps was speaking out of turn. I hope it was a mistake. I hope the Prime Minister reins him in. But, I mean, isn't the real issue that the, the government's communications has been all over the place from day one because they keep trying to offer us certainties when they don't have them and they don't know? The government is running a deliberate programme to scare people witless. So you've got people who are now frightened to leave their homes in case they get this virus that, by the way, most people recover from. And with a vaccine, will be far less severe than it is now for many people. So are you, are you saying we need to learn to live with a certain amount of death through of coronavirus? Of course we do. Because that, that's a hard thing for you to tell Grant Shapps today, isn't it, when his dad is in hospital? Um, um, Christian, my father died at 46. Didn't expect the world to stop for me. I was very sad the world went on. If we're going to start citing our own personal situations as a reason for doing something or not. We're getting into very dangerous territory. This isn't about what happened to me. It's not about what's happening to everybody in the cabinet. It's about the fact that millions and millions of our constituents are under an enormous about, a, amount of stress. And what we've done now, today, is perhaps rob, rob them of that hope that, they, that was keeping them going. I'm really sorry, but I'm not getting into this game where somehow a death from coronavirus is different from a death from cancer or death from heart disease. We accept that 20 odd thousand people die from flu every year. We accept that 617,000 people die every year from old age, but somehow you're not allowed to die from coronavirus ever. We cannot cancel life to preserve every life. What, what do you think about 10 year jail sentences for lying about where you've been on holiday? Well, I think most people think it's utter nonsense utter nonsense. So we're going to cart off some 19-year-old to prison who's been a bit leery about a trip to Portugal. I mean, come on. Does that kind of announcement actually then start undermining um, confidence in criminal justice? I mean, it does make the Secretary of State for Health look ridiculous. I mean, it really does. We have all these alpha males running around this issue just saying the first thing it seems that pops into their head without any thought for the repercussions it's going to have on millions and millions of stressed out people, people at the end of their tether. OK, now, I, I appreciate, I understand that hospitals are, are, are desperate places and I'm not a doctor and I'm not and I'm not a nurse, obviously, but I am someone who gets a different perspective. People really struggling, people trying to hold on with their fingertips and I'm really worried about them. They need, they need human contact. They really do. They need something to look forward to. So, Charles Walker, thank you very much. Well, joining me now from Edinburgh University is Devi Sridhar, Professor of Global Public Health. What do you say to the Charles Walkers who've basically had enough? 
To be honest, I mean, it sounds like a child having a tantrum because they want a unicorn for their birthday and no one can give them a unicorn. I mean, come on, we're in a pandemic and there are hard choices to be made and no one wants to be in a lockdown. And we are all suffering through this, the poor more than anyone else and those who are living in crowded housing and who are you know, at risk of loneliness and in an abusive situations. But just because we're angry about a lockdown, it's not presenting us a solution. The solution is how do we make this be the last lockdown? How do we do this properly to get our numbers low, build a system to keep them low, and put in place what we need to actually do that? And if the trade-off is actually we can't travel internationally, well, people in Australia and in New Zealand and in East Asia have accepted that trade-off. They get their life back. They get pubs, restaurants, concerts, music, sports, schools, an essential part, but they can't go abroad on holiday. That's the cost. And I don't understand why holidays provoke such furor when our schools being closed don't. Well, I suppose it might be because there is no prospect of ever being able to go on holiday at the moment, as long as coronavirus stays in, you know, in circulation. I mean, is, is that possible that we can just never travel to Australia? Well, actually, Australia and New Zealand have now a travel corridor so they can go between them. And you saw the Australian Open has welcomed tennis players from around the world with a quarantine. Are people willing to do a two-week quarantine to live a completely open and free life where you can hug people and you don't have to distance and wear masks? They're accepting it because that's what's happened. And a lot of the players have said, actually, they've changed their mind on the approach after having traveled to Australia. Do you get a sense that people are turning on experts again? You know, we, 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 we went from the sort of the Brexit period of the public's had enough of experts to the coronavirus when suddenly experts were back in fashion. And now you're not saying what people want to hear. Well, our job as experts is not to be popular. And we tend to say things and people tell us that we're spreading fear. So a year ago in January, when people asked me, is this virus in Wuhan worrying? Is it going to move internationally? The answer was yes. And people didn't like that answer because they didn't want to know it was coming. And then February, when Italy went into lockdown and people said, will that happen here? Will we go into lockdown? And I said, probably yes. And we went into lockdown. People didn't like that answer. And now people don't like that there's going to be variants out there which are challenging to our vaccines. And actually, it's science. Think of the people who've developed these f at least five effective vaccines and doctors and hospitals and the trials that have given us treatments. These are the people trying to find solutions. So it's easy to complain and say lockdown is awful and there are all of these problems. What's really hard is to find solutions and solutions that take us out of this deep pit in a way that preserves human life and the economy. Because being in repeated lockdown cycles is killing our economy. And the way to get out of it is actually to follow public health guidance, which is get those numbers low, build an effective test and trace isolate system and figure out if you're going to have to lose something, what is it going to be? And I think most people would say losing holidays for one summer is worth getting most other things in life back for. Professor Sridhar, thank you very much.